something way down that you get that feeling or through you when you're reading his word sometimes he speaks to us through his word he speaks in different ways but we just have to be quiet enough that we hear what he speaks and not only that we hear what he speaks but we do what he says that's so really important and our focus is when god speaks we must listen and obey and you know all through the old testament and even through the new testament god has always said trust me and obey me two simple things why do we find it so hard to do that why can't we trust him we should be able to trust him more than anybody because when god promises to do something he never breaks his promises amen and we and we really need to hear him, to listen to him, and to obey him. In our session overview, it seems that God oftentimes, he chooses to speak, and he chooses to speak through a, a unlikely person. Have you ever noticed that in the Old Testament a lot? It seems like he used, you look at, uh, at Jacob, who the, who he's, whose name he changed to Israel. Look at, look at the, how he used him. Jacob was a liar. He was a deceiver. And yet God used him. Look at David. Look what he did. He was a murderer. And he was an adulterer. A lot, and, and all of these things. But God, you know, God can, I, I can take a person that we would not even think about, and he can take that person and use that person That's right. for good. I have seen people, I know of one person that's right now, I don't know if we're down, but I remember him. He had hit rock bottom. He was a drunk. And I mean, he, he couldn't even take one drink till he would just get plumb drunk. And uh, he, the, the Lord came into his heart. He accepted Jesus Christ. And he became a preacher. And I mean, he had crowds of people that came to him because a lot of people came out of curiosity to start out with because they knew what he was like. And yet, they wanted to come and see if he had really changed. And he won lots and lots of people to Christ. It just goes to show you what God can do. He He uses people we, we, we wouldn't even think about using. One look at yourself and you might say, well, why did God choose me? Why did he choose me? Sometimes I've said, you know, I do believe that God chose me to be a teacher because I've been teaching ever since, let's see, wow, I think I started when I was 18. I got saved when I was 14. And I started teaching the young people. But I've always taught adults. For some reason, I don't know why, I've always taught adults. It seems like that's where God wanted me. And I thought, why would he want me to be a teacher? Why? But he knew more about me than I did. You, you know, you might say, well, why did God choose me to do this? You might think that your shortcomings and your failures, that would that would keep you from being a teacher. That would keep you from, from doing things. Mm -hmm. But you know what? God knows what he's doing. He can take a person Amen. and do what he wants to. God chooses every one of us for some mission. I believe that every one of us, has got, there's a plan. God had a plan for each and every one of us. He chooses to speak and he expects us to listen. When, you, when he speaks, he wants us to listen, and not only does he want us to listen, he, want it, he wants us to obey what he says. And when we're reading his word, he wants us to listen. You can't just, uh, I think some people think that when they read their Bible, they can just read it, you know, go through it. If you do it like that, you're not getting anything from it. You've got to really read it and uh you don't read it like blah, 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 blah. no you take your time so that you can uh, grasp all of it so that you can get it inside of you 
just like in our lesson today, God's, he told, God told him to eat the words. He told Ezekiel to eat those words. Amen. And what, is he, what did he mean by eating those words? Take them into his mouth and, 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 and listen to what he said and, and know exactly what it is. In our introduction, here is life's most profound truth. Everything starts with God. What does the book of Genesis start with? In the beginning. In the beginning, right? What about the book of John? In, in the, the beginning. beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Who do we think of as the Word? Jesus. 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 We think of Jesus as the Word. He was with God in the very beginning. So he, he's not a stranger. From the, even though he came into the world as a baby, he was already with God he, <clears throat> when they created the earth. He was for, with God right from the very beginning. So in the beginning, God spoke. When he spoke, things happened. He spoke things into being. From his words came all of that. The stars, the planets, the oceans, the rivers, the mountains, the valleys, the plants, the animals. He spoke all of this into being. All he had to do was speak, and it happened. Finally, he spoke, and he formed humankind. And he took the earthly elements to form a human being. And then, what did he give them a spirit? By breathing the breath into them. And this, this was a, a spirit he gave us that was above the rest of creation. One has life when God grants it. One has authority when God gives it. One is a prophet when God gives a message. God spoke. And because he did, everything is. This is the God who has chosen men and women to bear his likeness and message. And what does the Bible tell us? That we were made in his likeness and in his image. So we may not know what God looks like. I know sometimes I picture him sitting on a throne, a gold throne, because it would have to be gold. And the, I see him sitting on this throne, and I see Jesus beside of him. And I picture him having long, having white hair, long white hair, I don't know why, and a purple robe that goes all the way down with a, the, with a white ermine around it. That's the way I picture him sometimes. But my picture might be wrong. But I think he looks down upon earth and he looks and sees what's going on. I wonder sometimes if he don't feel like just getting rid of the whole bunch. I'm sure sometimes that he has. I know with the children of Israel, he was ready to get rid of them. And Moses had to speak up and tell him to remind, he had to remind God the promise that he made to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And when he did that, then God, then God repented of uh, his anger. See, God gets angry, and uh, his wrath can be something else. But you know what? Even with his wrath, his love is even greater. God is love. <clears throat> uh, uh, this is the God of glory and majesty. This is the God of creation. This is the God that Ezekiel saw in his vision. And it's this God who chose Ezekiel as a messenger, you wonder now, the children of Israel have been taken into captivity. They're in Babylon. Ezekiel, he is there too. And all of a sudden, he sees a vision. I'm sure he wonders, why me? Why, why did God choose me to be a, a prophet, to, to speak to the children of Israel? Because that's what he wants him to do. Everything starts with God. First of all, he chooses the individual. He chooses the message. And he chooses the people. He chooses the time. And then when the time is just right, that's when, he, that's when he does all this stuff. 
in concept one, God sets people on their feet. Now I'm going to read from the King James Version. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river of Kabar, that the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. Now it says in the 30th year, now this possibly could be how old that Ezekiel was at the time because of most priests entered the priesthood whenever they were 30 years old. So it's possible that when it says the 30th year, it could be that it was uh, how old Ezekiel was at this time. We're not sure. But now, Ezekiel, we find him in these next verses trying to describe the vision of God. And there was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads when they stood and let down their wings. We see here we skip from chapter one, I mean from verse one to verse 25. And above the firmament that was over their heads was like the likeness of a throne as the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it. And I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire round about within it, from the appearance of his loins even upward, and from the appearance of his loins even downward. I saw as it were the appearance of fire, and it had brightness round about, as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness that was round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice of one that speaks. Now you, you can tell in these words that Ezekiel is trying, he's struggling to explain what he saw. And he saw a throne, <coughs> and it looked, it was, he, don't, he doesn't know whether it was fire. It looked like fire, and yet it looked like a real bright light. He was trying to describe what it was. And he was uh, conveying this brightness and this beauty and the color and the brilliance of the glory of God. What Ezekiel saw was not a human form, but the best well, that he could approximate. He couldn't exactly make out what it was. It looked like the form of a man, but he couldn't really tell. <laughs> so after all, you know, prophets, they're human too, and they can only use their human descriptions to describe what they saw. But whatever he saw, it overwhelmed him. For what did he do after he saw all of this? He fell down on his face, and he was in, fell down in worshiping before this vision. <clears throat> and he said that he saw the color of amber. Anyway, you, you've seen a rainbow after the rain, haven't you? You've seen how, that, how beautiful that is. And you know, we see in verse 28 where he it describes it like a, almost like a rainbow. He has a hard time trying to really explain it in what it was like. And in verse, for now we go to verse 4. For they are impudent children. Now this is God speaking here. They are impudent children and stiff and stiff hearted. Who is he talking about? He is talking about the children of Israel. I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. So now he's telling Ezekiel that he's going to send him to the children of Israel. How does Ezekiel know that they're going to listen to him? They're in exile, and he's going to talk to them about God. Well, we'll find out in our lesson. And this is what God said to him. Say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. 
whatever the precise message was that God gave to Ezekiel, he had he was to make he made it perfectly clear that this message was not concocted from human thought, but it came from a direct relation from God Himself. So God Ezekiel has to make it clear that it didn't come from him. It came from God. And preacher, I'm sure that sometimes your messages come from God. They don't come directly from you. They come from something that God has given you. And I'm sure that sometimes you've had a message all laid out and God changes it, don't he? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's the way God works. He, he changes it. I don't care how well we, we think we're going to do something. First thing you know, he changes it. He's changed my mind three times in the last two, three months. And I've listened to him. And I think I, I'm glad that I did listen to him. Because had I, had I done what I was planning on doing, it would just make things worse. So he knows what's best. We have to listen. Parents, God has granted you an authority to lead your children and a responsibility to make the job that, lead, that leads out of spiritual priorities. As parents, it is our job to teach them about God because they're certainly not going to learn it in the schools. I know when I went to school, we had devotion every morning and we prayed. Now then, they don't do that. Now then, we've got teachers that tell children there is no such thing as God. You know, I, I just think that it's terrible to think that there are some teachers that do that. I don't think they should be teaching. I just don't think they should tell children because children's minds, they're young minds, and they get they get confused enough as it is, and then to tell them something like that, that there's no such thing as God. <clears throat> it blows my mind. Your message to your children, it should be reasonable, it should be clearly, and it should be communicated in love, and it should be reflective of God's character. And this is possible as you prayerfully and systematically study the Bible, and submit yourself to the disciplines of worship and holy living. God can and he does speak to us. We're the creatures of the creator. And we recognize his tender voice. He doesn't send an unclear message when he speaks to us. His message is very clear. And he calls us to higher ground. Our question, why would God bother to send Ezekiel to the people who wouldn't respond to the message? You know, this might have seemed kind of odd to Ezekiel. Here is God is telling him, he won't, I want you to go speak to the children of Israel. Now, I know they're stiff-hearted. I know they're, imp they're just like impudent children, but I want you to go speak to them. And Ezekiel he probably felt like, well, how, how am I going to speak to him? Why me? Why, why choose me? I'm sure, you know, Moses, he didn't, he asked God, why did he choose him? Mm -hmm. We don't know, but God has his reasons. And look, look how Moses did. Look what all he did. But Ezekiel, I'm sure he wondered, well, what in the world am I going to, I don't know how I'm going to, how's he going to listen to me? I don't know how I'm going to get him to listen to me. But he knew that God was behind it. And as long as God was behind it, then everything would go okay. And God assured him that it was going to be okay. Have you ever experienced a clear communication from God? I'm sure all of us have. I have. And I know I'm, all of, I'm sure some of you have, have had a clear, really just as clear as it could be. I know I've had it. For, uh, it, it was just... I couldn't, I couldn't exactly describe the voice, a little bit like Ezekiel, I guess, but it was so clear and so real. And I mean, it's odd how, some, how, how, you, how you get like that. And God speaks to us sometimes and, and at different times and in different ways. And I don't know, it just kind of got me. It was amazing. I felt... I just could feel the spirit. 
and you, any of you have ever felt the felt the Holy Spirit, and you know what I'm talking about. And now let's go now to <clears throat> concept four. God sets the responsibility on our shoulders. He picks us. He chooses us. He gives us the message. And now what's the rest of it? The rest of it's left up to us, isn't it? Mm -hmm. To obey him. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. We still have God speaking to Ezekiel. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house, Open thy mouth and eat that that I give thee. And do you notice how many times he says whether they hear or whether they will forbear? He, keep, he repeats that to Ezekiel. And he, he says they're rebellious people. And I know that it's, it's going to be a little difficult. But eat the words that I'm giving you. And everything is going to be okay. When, he, when God created humankind, he didn't create us a race of machines. He could have. You know, he could have made us like robots for everything he said we did. But God did not want that. He did not want that. He could have done that been very easy. He wanted a people that, would, that had a mind of themselves to choose the difference between right and wrong. <coughs> And, and he was hoping they would choose right, but he knew how they were, just like he knew that, that Israel was a rebellious people. <clears throat> he created us with the power to choose between good and bad, right and wrong. He created us with a will <clears throat> that can be bent in any direction that we choose. And with any choice that we make, there is accountability attached to that. God warned Ezekiel that his hearers might not hear him. And I wonder how Ezekiel felt when he said, Now here you have, you've given me this message and you told me to go tell them. Now you tell me they might not even hear me. And he also said, not, not only will they might not hear you, they might not even obey you. The choice is up to them. But nevertheless, I want to make it, God want to make it so that they would eventually understand that Ezekiel was God's chosen prophet, that God had chose him to go speak to the children of Israel. To know God's call upon your life is like a stabilizing factor when, when opposition arises. The Lord charges those he calls with a responsibility to stand firm upon the threat of verbal persecution or unpleasant circumstances. Whether or not anyone else listens and whether they obey, we are to hear and we are to obey God. We must be faithful to share God's message of truth and hope with people. We cannot control their response to the message. We can only obey as God leads. You know, God God warned Ezekiel not to not to fear what mere humans could do to him. But don't don't be afraid of what they're gonna do. Because they're not going to hear you, but eventually they will. And he says, uh I have called you. See, you know, he mentions briars, thorns, and scorpions. He says, um, where is that? Oh, he says, son of man, be not afraid of them, and neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee, and, and though 
and thou dost dwell among scorpions, be not afraid of their words. And don't be dismayed at how they look at you. But remember, they are a rebellious house. <clears throat> so he is telling Ezekiel not to be afraid of what they, uh, of what they uh, say of what they do because he says don't even show any kind of fear when you go to talk to them. You know, a lot of times in the Old Testament, a lot of the prophets, they were ignored sometimes. And sometimes they were persecuted because of what they said, especially if they prophesied something wrong, something bad. They didn't want to hear that. They wanted to, they wanted to hear it something good. <clears throat> anyway, I about, I about skipped the place, didn't I? Yeah. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. You I did. got it. I got it. Oh, I, I sold. No, I did. I skipped one. I'm sorry about that. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked will turn from all of his sins that he hath committed, and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, and he shall not die. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live? But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness, and committeth iniquity, and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned. In his trespass that he hath trespassed, and his sin that he hath sinned, in them shall he die. So God's basically saying that it's not his wish that any should. Okay. You, you I think that's in next week's. Huh? I think that's next week's. Next week? Yeah, I think what you read was for next week. Yeah. The 15th. Now yeah, you're right. Okay. Uh -huh. It's still good. I couldn't, I didn't believe that I was at the end of it. <laughs> okay, so I didn't leave anything. You didn't leave anything. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. I must be getting dementia. <laughs> no, you're not. You're excited. Oh, me. Anyway. <laughs> like he said, we can't control the, pe the people's response to the message we have. That's just like the preacher when he gets up, to, when he brings his message. He can't control how the people are going to react to mm -hmm. your message, can you? No. All you have to do is deliver the message that God gave you. That's, that's, that's what he gave you to do. And uh, it's, it's up to the people whether they're going to listen and whether they're going to heed it. Not only listen, but do. And, and that's what I said. We can't control that. All the only thing we can do is obey uh, is for us to obey God and lead the way he wants us to. What do you think God meant when he said to Ezekiel, open your mouth and eat what I give you? What do you think that meant? Uh, well, the, the writer says God's words tasted sweet to him, though they would be bitter to the heathen, to the hearers. By eating God's words, Ezekiel was showing his obedience to God's call to preach. And he was fully absorbing the truth of what God was telling him. Also, the word needed to be a part of him before he could share it with others. In other words, he wanted it to really get into him. And he really knew what he was going to be telling them. Why do you think God said, do not be afraid three times? He told it, you know, as we read it, he told Ezekiel three times, do not be afraid. Because God was going to be with him. God gave him the message. He knew what he was doing. And at first, when Ezekiel did uh, approach, and, and whenever he 
said what God told him to when he told that to the children of Israel. They didn't want to hear him. They didn't, they didn't want to have anything to do with him. But he kept on saying what God told him to say. Eventually, the people listened. Because it was because of their disobedience, because of them uh, leaving God out, that they ended up in Babylon to begin with. That's why, so if you, if you, if you read in the Old Testament and read about the children of Israel, you will see time and time again they disobeyed God. They rebelled. Even when they were in the wilderness, sometimes they would they were complain. I said they sh they were complainers. That's what I want to say. Because as soon as a, everything was going good, oh, it was okay. Then when things started going a little bad, oh, why didn't we just stay in Egypt? We just you just brought us out here in this wilderness for us to die. It's a wonder God didn't destroy them. I tell you this. I wonder sometimes does He get like that with us? You know, I'm glad God doesn't give up on us. I Amen. really am. Because I feel like sometimes I fail him. And and I and uh, I want to be everything he wants me to be. I want to do his will. I want to be, I want him to take me and use me. I don't care how old I am. If there's something he wants me to do, I want to do it. And I, this is the way I feel. He does not ask us to do anything that he knows we cannot do. God doesn't do that. He may choose a person that we wouldn't even think about choosing, but he can take that person and he can make a master out of them. I think of my, great, my granddaughter who was a drug addict. She hit bottom, lost her two girls. Her mama and daddy became guardians of her girls. She lost everything. And she went out to rehab. She got saved at this altar right here. And now she will be clean nine years this coming February. She is making over $100,000 a year because she is going into hospitals and, play, and rehab places, some places. She's telling them, if you have somebody that comes in here that's on drugs and overdoses, here is where they can go and get help. But she tells everybody, if you don't have God in your heart, you're not going to make it. That's what she tells them. And she said, Grandma, had it not been for God, I, I, would, I don't know what I would do. I wouldn't be here. And I think how he took her, she had, she had reached rock bottom. He took her, and look where he's got her today. She said, if anybody had told her years ago that she would be like this, I'd have never believed him. It just goes to show you what God can do and how he can take people and use that person for his benefit. <clears throat> what must happen in our lives before we can proclaim God's word to others? Well, it's easy. We must obey him when he tells us to do something. Don't say, no, God, I, I don't want to do that. That's not what I want to do. <clears throat> no, I'll do what you tell me to do, God. No matter what the con what, 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 uh, how hard it is, no matter what people might say, no matter, my, no matter what, if you tell me to do it and I know you're going to be with me, I'll do it. We can do anything as long as we obey him and as long as he's with us and as long as he speaks to us and tells us to. Using, it says using a sheet of paper to record your thoughts. Describe a time when you felt God was speaking to you. If you can remember the first time, it might be more meaningful. How did you know it was God? How did you know it was God talking to you? Might have been the devil. Now, I think we can distinguish God's voice from the devil's voice. I knew that this wasn't the devil when it spoke to me. I knew that wasn't it because of what he said to me. I knew it. Is God speaking to me right now? If your answer to that question is yes, will you accept his authority? Will you do what he asks you to do? If he speaks to you, will you do that? If God's dealing with you on an issue of obedience, then we need to pray for one another. You know, that is, that is so important that we pray for one another. You know, we, we're supposed to love one another. I don't care 
what a person does to us, no matter how bad they hurt us, we still have to love that person. Sometimes it's hard to love somebody that has done us wrong. Mm -hmm. It's hard. But we have to. God tells us we've got to. He says we're to love our enemies. And if they hit us on one cheek, we're to turn the other one. Sometimes that's hard to do, ain't it? But that's what we have to do. Well, I got through about five minutes early. Amen. <laughs> Even reading last next Sunday's lesson. <laughs> next Sunday's part of next Sunday's lesson. Thank y'all so much. I hope you will remember the message, what it is that God speaks to you. Please listen and do. Amen.